Hey everybody and welcome back to coverage of the StarCityGames.com Invitational here in Baltimore. I'm Joey Pasco and I'm here with Drew Levin. Hey folks. The cold stare of Drew Levin here. Uh, Drew, why don't you tell us about what you're playing in Legacy? Sure. So this is a mostly stock version of Rug Delver. There are a few differences from what you might normally see. Uh, this is, I think even more than a Delver deck, a Nimble Mongoose deck. Uh, Nimble Mongoose is a card that a lot of decks have a lot of problems with. It can't be killed by a lot of conventional removal, and the removal that people do play is often vulnerable to mana disruption and spell pierce. Um, as a result, I'm playing four spell pierces and three force of wills. Okay. Uh, since the deck has almost no ways of recouping card advantage, mm -hmm. Uh, you have to make do with a lot of card quality. Okay. And Spell Pierce is as good a force of will as a force of will is on most days. Oh, well, I mean, I, I like that logic. So, uh, yeah, tell uh, us a little more. Sin since this is a Nimble Mongoose deck, you want Thought Scour to make sure that this is a Wild Nacatl early and often. Um, you still want Ponders and Brainstorms because they're the best ever, but Thought Scour is another hit for your Delver, and... Uh, threshes your mongoose very quickly. The problem with playing something like Snapcaster Mage in this deck is that you only have 18 or 19 lands in most lists, mm -hmm. and so if you ever get wastelanded or you're just tight on mana, drawing one is a dead card and drawing two just feels like the worst ever. Right. Uh, since you often don't have the chance to pick your spots with Brainstorm, mm -hmm. you don't really have the luxury of setting up Brainstorm, Fetch Land, shuffle away my Snapcasters, draw something new. Right. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty basic disruption suite. Forces, dazes, spell pierces, spell snares, and the traditional blue, red, green mana base. I added an extra land because I don't enjoy losing to mana screw, <laughs> and because of some of the cards in the sideboard that want, make me want to raise my curve. Okay. Well, speaking of the sideboard, why don't you tell us about that? Sure. So... One of the really appealing parts of playing this deck is that you get to play a really nice card called Sulfur Elemental. Or Elemental Sulfuro, right? Yeah, <laughs> as the Italians call it. Uh, Sulfur Elemental was a card that I thought of right before the uh, the, Grand the, the Grand Prix in Indianapolis. Uh, Jarvis Yu came up with the idea, and I strongly considered playing Rug with Sulfur Elemental as a way to combat uh, the rise of Thalia and Mother of Runes in Green White Maverick mm -hmm. because they just couldn't, if they couldn't protect their knights, then I actually, actually had a fair shot of beating them with the best card ever in any given matchup where you get to cast it for free, which is Submerge. <laughs> Submerge is not very good if they have a Mother of Runes. If they don't have a Mother of Runes, it's, yeah, well, it's it, it is a zero right? mana <laughs> Remo kill your yeah. guy for free. Yeah. Uh, since they shuffle their deck a fair bit, you can just catch them with a night trigger. Mm -hmm. uh, the search isn't optional, and so they have to shuffle it away. Right. Uh, so Submerge is really great, and Sulphur Elemental helps you protect it. The reason why Sulphur Elemental is so good this weekend is that a lot of people are picking up the Esper deck yeah. that is playing for Lingering Souls. Yeah. Lingering Souls is the way that Esper wants to be able to beat Nimble Mongoose. If you Sulphur Elemental them in response yeah. to you know, them attacking with a jet-equipped creature, suddenly their math is completely off. Right. And they often just don't have an attack, and you get to crash through with your Warpath Ghoul and your Wild Nakatl and whatever yeah. other idiots you have. <laughs> and it, it becomes a, a less fair game. Um, beyond Sulphur Elemental and Submerge, you have Scavenging Ooze as a way to combat the mirror, uh, because it eats creatures, brings you out of burn range, uh, shrinks their Tarmogoyf, shrinks their Nimble Mongoose, mm -hmm. and can grow out of bolt range fairly quickly so that you actually have a creature that could win a fight with a Tarmogoyf. Right. Since the mirror is all about out Tarmogoyfing people, mm -hmm. you want to sideboard in more Tarmogoyfs that have utility elsewhere. Uh, Scavenging Goose was the best option given that I didn't really want to play Crypt. I wanted something a little sturdier against Dredge and Reanimator, mm -hmm. something that could 
come down on turn three, disrupt them. And it's and, a threat as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and then exactly. kill them. Right, exactly. So scavenging, um, scavenging news kind of just does it all, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Caleb played Green Sun Zenith in his Indianapolis deck. Mm -hmm. The problem is Green Sun Zenith has a lot of tension with spell pierce. Right. Uh, so he had stifle so that he could like knock them off of a land early mm -hmm. and then tap out for a Green Sun Zenith for a Nimble Mongoose or Scavenging News or a Tarmogoyf. Mm -hmm. But I want to just draw Scavenging News, play it with uh, Tropical Island up, and then go right, from there. The, uh, Whereas, you know, he, he can take advantage of an opponent maybe not being able to play a spell for a turn. The reason why I don't want to play Stifle is that really good players just let Stifle happen. Uh -huh. Bad players will try and play around Stifle. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't have Stifle against the good players and I draw it late, then my deck is much worse. Mm -hmm. Against bad players, I can just represent Stifle anyway, which is why I'm intentionally playing uh, blue-green and blue-red fetch lands, mm -hmm. because those tell people I have Stifle in my deck, yeah. even though I don't have any basic lands at all. So any blue fetch land will do. Mm -hmm. Wooded foothills would also do. Right. But again, that doesn't tell them I have yeah, Stifle, don't stifle. break your fetch land, don't do anything on turn one or two. Right. So if I have a slow developing start, then I can just pretend that I have Stifle in my deck and bad players will play around it anyway. Right, yeah, it's almost as if you have it you right. know, in your deck and you don't. Uh, so and then they get beat by Soul Pierce anyway. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that get in this deck? I, I, I love your logic, yeah. Um, um, so what, what, Yeah, go ahead and tell us about the rest of the cyborg. The, the reason for Sulfuric Vortex is that with the rise of Batter Skull and Umazawa's GT, uh, you really need a way to be able to beat uh, equipment coming into play and actually doing whatever it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you could lean a lot on grudges, but you also want Vortex against bug lists, for instance that don't really have a way of removing an enchantment, mm -hmm. and you just let it sit there, tick down, and then nug them with a few bolts and they're dead. Right. Like, against decks that can't realistically race you, mm -hmm. Sulfuric Vortex, and and load up on a lot of removal to stop your Nimble Mongies, for example, mm -hmm. you just Vortex them on three and they often can't really win. Right, right. Um, beyond that, you still want a grudge because people still play artifacts in this format. It is Legacy. You still want a Life from the Loam, as a way to get back your wastelands against control decks and a way to get back your green sources in the mirror. And you want uh, red blasts as another card against combo decks because if you don't have a particularly fast start, you're eventually going to need a hard counter because they can develop their mana out of the range of your tases and spell pierces. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, are there any decks that you don't want to see? Green-white isn't a particularly nice matchup, but okay. I think that given this configuration, mm -hmm. it's something that I'm comfortable playing. Okay, cool. Well, sounds good to me, and uh, thanks for thanks for joining us here in the Deck Tech, uh, sharing your, your deck with us. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with you later. Fantastic. And uh, hopefully, good luck in the, in the event. Uh, Thank you. I, I know what you're playing in standards, a pretty spicy brew, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> so uh, catch, us, uh, catch up with us later. Uh, more coverage of the StarCityGames.com invitational here in Baltimore.